After a big week for Garmin cycling with two new bike computers and a significant refresh to the rally power meter, comes a firmware update that skipped the public beta stream and lands straight on all of these devices. Those being the 540, 840, 1040, 1050 and Edge MTB, as well as new release day firmware rolling out for the 550 and 850. Whew, there's a lot going on there. So if you own any of these and you are prompted for that update this weekend, let's get across what's new and put some of these updates to the test out on the road. Alrighty, kicking off with the firmware that relates to the 540, 840, 1040 and Edge MTB. They're now adding support for the Rally 110 and 210 power meters, including four starter and pedal IQ smart calibration alerts. I'm reaching sideways because these have finally arrived here in the Llama Lab. Both the Rally RS200 or 210, sorry, dual-sided Rogue Shimano and the XC210 dual-sided SPD. Haven't even unboxed them yet. They've just arrived a few hours ago. I will be putting them through their paces and I'm glad that all the additional metrics and things are now supported on these units. The force will be interesting to look into because force can be reported from almost any power meter with a Connect IQ add-on with any of the older generations too. Anyway, I'll look deeper into that to see what that's about. Fixed potential inReach remote issues after losing connection. Garmin inReach is the companion device for these devices for satellite communications if you're well out of cell reception for your phone. Fix an issue where custom maps wouldn't draw. I'm not across exactly what that's all about. Ever since the X40 onwards, I've always just used the maps that are supplied with Garmin Express on these units. You get global maps for free. You don't have to sideload, backload, upload, download, whatever load. Um, it's just all there in Garmin Express for wherever you're heading. No hackery required. Next on the list there, fixed issue with audio prompts not playing in some cases. I wasn't across any of those units having issues with audio prompts. I do know the 1050 has an issue that I'll get to in just a few seconds. And finally there, general improvements to device stability and address various minor bugs. That catch all general improvements and fixes. Next up, things get a bit more spicy for the 1050. Right, support for the Rally 110. Again, same as the previous change. Look, I'll just highlight the differences there. Improved compass performance while creating timing gates. So those mountain bike timing gates we saw roll out for the Edge MTB, which has come across to the other X50 units now. They obviously need directions to be correct to go through the timing gates. Always good to have your compass sorted for that. Fix an issue where turn instruction icon was incorrect for certain roundabouts. Now those playing the not so long game, you might remember my previous Garmin Edge firmware video, put up this image here. Yes, there is a certain roundabout here. Well, actually, there's quite a few certain roundabouts this problem occurs on. I was out today to test that. We'll see that in just a few moments on the 1050. Skipping down to the next unique update here, fixed an issue with audio prompts not playing in some cases. Now that was in the previous one, but it does relate to this unit right here. People were saying with the latest firmware, they weren't getting turn-by-turn -turn spoken navigation prompts. So in a two-for-one test, let's get out on the road today and check if both of those things have been fixed. Home navigation, back to start, along same route. Right, excellent, there we have it. And we have, definitely have sounds, voice prompts, voice navigation alerts uh, turned on. Okay, they are enabled. Let's go back and ride our short distance home. Don't know where the sunshine came from. But I'll take it. Wow, there we go. Voice prompts are on. <laughs> that was the 1050. Do we get seeing within the first few meters? All right, and unfortunately, instead of giving a roundabout navigation, it's telling me to turn onto the sidewalk trail, which I didn't actually ride on. Uh, let's take this turn anyway. cycle way uh, well there is a bike path next to me but there's also a very good bike path on the road that I'm on so I decided to loop back around and do direct path home on the 1050 and follow the same path on the 840 here's what happened with that right there we go the icon is now working although <laughs> The 840 has put me on the sidewalk trail. The uh, 1050 has now got the creeks roundabout. Right. I call that caring too much about a single line in a change log than I really should. But there we have it. 
Problem solved. Let's go race these speed signs. Ah, oh, not even close. Given I've got wind field on the screen here and it works pretty well in this location, I knew this section would be a tailwind. You can see there, wind field, 21, 25k an hour westerly, complete tailwind. How fast can I get to in this little section? And can I verify the speed on the garment, the speed detected by this sign? Oh, get out of here. So it was safe to say, I was pretty disappointed that speed trap did not detect me. However, good news is the roundabout icon is working and so is voice nav on the 1050. So good to see both of those fixed out on the road there on the 1050. From there down, uh, general improvements to device stability and address various minor bugs, the catch-all that we always see. Improved compass performance while creating timing gates. We've seen that up above and fixed issue where turn instruction icon was incorrect for certain roundabouts. Not sure what's going on there, Garmin. You've got a cut and paste error. One could say we're going in circles. Dad joke, high five. Yes! Thanks, Max. And the final change log we'll look at today is for the 550 and 850. This firmware dropped just after release, so it wasn't the one that I had in my video. Came out a few hours later. It is numbered 709, so the other firmwares for these went to 28.x to unify their version numbers for these. These ones back here are still on the 7x version of the firmware. I'm not quite sure if they're going to unify that version number. Makes things a lot easier if they did. Anyhow, highlighting the differences here with these 550 and 850. Improved auto backlight performance. That's the hot topic of these ones. Screen brightness and backlight performance. Hang around, I went out on the trails and tested that out today. Improved touchscreen performance. Had no issues with the touchscreen on this one. Fixed issues with time in gear. Now, time in gear is a new feature on the 550, 850, where if you have an electronic group set, after the ride, you can scroll down in the summary, press a few buttons and scroll down with timing gear and ratios and things like that. It's a little clumsy. I can't see any reference to that information in Connect on the web just yet, which is really where that does belong. I'm a big fan of SRAM Access Web, which will show that information as well and show it really, really nicely. The Shimano eTube app will also show that information, but that's a little clumsy too. Anyhow, on screen there is a little example of what that is. They've fixed issues with that. And the last line item there highlighted that's different is fixed crash in weather map. Now, if you've watched my video on the 850 and the 550, there was an awkward moment where I was showing you what the weather overlays were all about and it crashed on me. Unfortunately, it still does the same thing. Let me demonstrate that again. If it doesn't crash, I'll be happy. I'll show it on screen. So we have weather map here. I'm currently in Ballarat. About 120 k's from Melbourne, as you can see on screen. Let's go for the temperature. Wait for that overlay to load. And with that, it will need a little bit more work. Okay, onto today's bonus round in this video. I was out with the 850 on the gravel bike, testing this unit's battery burn time with auto brightness turned off. I took a page out of DC Ramaker's book, set it to 30%, which is quite low just to see how much estimated battery burn time this would have. I can confirm it was a lot more than 12 hours, but in the environment I was in today, there was a very, very big compromise in visibility. Now, just before getting to that footage, I did have a comment saying that, hey, if you want more battery, turn the backlight to off. This screen technology doesn't have a backlight that can be turned off. A funny story with the release of the 1050, um, when that first came out, I did set the backlight to off and the screen went completely black. Couldn't see a thing. I thought it was a bug put in a support ticket, Garmin replied back with, oh yeah, this screen technology has to be always on. So they since modified the firmware in these and it, as it rolled out with these newer units that when you set backlight off, the backlight never goes off. It goes down to about 10%. It is always on. If it's not on, you ain't seen a thing. Okay, on the bike today, I had the 850 on top there set to 30% brightness and the 840 solar set to auto. Now, you can't see the screen very well here, so I'm going to switch it to auto brightness on the 850, and then bang, that comes back to life, and it's much easier to read. Now, there's a ton of variables about why this would be good or bad or whatever in different environments, but this is my ride today out here on a semi-overcast day. And with auto, it's actually readable. Now, going back to the setting, now, it defaulted when it was auto to 80% brightness. So that's the level that it went to. It could go even brighter than if you went to 100, but ROP battery on that one. All right, back to 30%, and there we go. So that's the difference between 30% brightness, which would work in very dim light, maybe at night. But during the day here, 
no go. And you can see there, that's set to auto on the 840 Solar. Pulling up the battery burn data for this ride of around an hour 15 door to door. And it's pretty obvious which one is which. Now the Edge 840 Solar was always set to auto and was pretty visible for the whole ride versus the Edge 850, which was extremely dim, except for that small section where I put it on auto. Although the estimated battery burn here was 17.86 hours, it still wasn't with the screen being really that visible as opposed to the 840 solar, which has an estimated capacity of 26 hours of demanding use. Now there wasn't a lot of solar charge out today. There wasn't a lot of sunshine. 25.33, that's pretty close to spec. This, well, it's a lot more than 12 by a long shot, but whether this is acceptable as a use case with a dimmer screen, well, that's nah, gonna be a decision people have to make. So good numbers there on the battery, but not so good on the eyes, with that visibility at 30% being way too low for the ride that I was on today. So from here, I'll keep an eye on any updates rolling out to these newer units, plus any features rolling over to the 1050. We haven't seen that weather widget or the gear tracking either on that just yet. All right, we'll leave it there for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one. If you have, as always, thumbs up. It's much appreciated. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It really helps out around here, and we'll see you soon.